Okay, so um, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Andreas Pfeil, and I'm the current um, yeah maintainer and developer for uh, this Java library that we call Our Great uh, Java. Um, but the actual implementation, as it is now, is uh, based on Nikola Sochev's uh, bachelor thesis. Uh, so um, I'm presenting it uh, for him uh, instead. Um, you can see the logo that we, we would use, uh, like to use for it uh, below in the middle. So it's uh, similar to the Our Crate logo. Uh, if there's some issue with reusing the colors, etc. Uh, okay. <laughs> If, if it would be, that wouldn't be an issue, just, uh, just tell us. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, at first I uh, thought it might be a good idea to uh, explain to you who we are, uh, to explain our motivation. So um, we are part, uh, uh, our, our department uh, is named uh, Data Exploitation Methods, or DM for short. And uh, we are part of the IT uh, Data and Computing Center of KIT, uh, Steinbuch Center for Computing. And um, DEM is doing research and development uh, for large data collections with the goal of data exploitation. With that, we mean that uh, usually in, in projects, we help with uh, research data management and um, try to improve it in a way so we can get most out of the data and uh, usually the really uh, valuable information is uh, the metadata uh, that appears there so uh, it's uh, quite a focus here um, usually we have uh, we are involved in projects involving digital humanities or material science um, and we are also involved in well, let's say more generic projects like the NFDI projects. Uh, it's a series of projects for the national research data infrastructure in uh, Germany. And uh, in HMC, which is the Helmholtz metadata collaboration platform. Um, that's where I'm especially involved in. Um, so the idea here is to foster the use of metadata in Helmholtz. And in that context, we are also um, active um, in the Research Data Alliance and the Fair Digital Objects Forum. So uh, why are we interested in Aurocrate? Um, so we are part of Working Package 2 of the HMC proposal, um, which is also called the Fair Data Commons. And that's a term for tools and services uh, supporting the, uh, the realization of, of FAIR in Helmholtz. And of course, we'd like to uh, follow standards and existing standards and technologies uh, as far as possible. Um, so our project is interesting in, in that regard. And uh, we also have a focus on digital, fair digital objects uh, in, in HMC. So um, I'll come to that back later. Um, but we see some, some, some good uh, relations between uh, fair digital objects and our project. Um, in general, we also have interest uh, in standardized package formats uh, since we chaired the RDA working group on research data repository interoperability. Um, there have been, they, they considered already our model and data crate in the past, um, but it hasn't been found applicable yet. And with our crate, uh, at least from the DM uh, perspective, uh, this has changed. So. Um, yeah, so that's uh, our motivation. Um, one short uh, insert about uh, how we see fair digital objects in the our create context. So, um, well, in the end, it's um, coming down to this that we see fair digital object as this, as this uh, common layer uh, to access and act on objects. And um, but it's hard to to realize this this idea of fair DOS without the, the information around it, right? So we need uh, some minimum of metadata and our crate, of course, uh, is, is able to store all of it uh, due to its, uh, its flexibility. And yeah, so this is how our, let's say, vision looks like. We are more interested in this uh, PID and PID record um, section so this is how what we would call the what makes something a fair do and we think that our grade is a perfect fit 
um, for the process of, of getting them. So about the implementation, so obviously it's uh, written in Java and um, uh, as it's a static, statically typed language, the architecture is uh, different from the existing implementations in Python and Ruby. Um, but in the end, the architecture is not uh, very, um, uh, didn't turn out to be as complicated as we fear. Let's uh, phrase it like that. So we were uh, quite unsure how we could handle all these uh, uh, linked data uh, possibilities um, in, in, in the implementation. But in the end, uh, it's um, relatively unspectacular implementation and was pretty straightforward. So we, uh, or Nicola, use the strategy pattern and lot interfaces and the observer pattern also. I can uh, go into detail on that later. Um, and in some cases, we weren't able to do the um, deserialization directly to Java classes, but had to do some, some JSON handling in, on import. But in the end, um, it wasn't that hard. And um, I think this is an architecture that probably is doable in every object-oriented language. Um, our goal was to have a strong control uh, using the API. Um, so we wanted to, to make our implementation to build valid crates. Um, and the user should be guided, you know, by autocomplete and um, without knowing the specification too well. So um, we didn't want people to read the specification and then use our library, um, but we, we wanted to have this focused on, on valid crates, more or less independent of uh, the knowledge of how it works under the hood. And to do so, we used the, or Nicola used the builder pattern um, to have, give some, some control on that. Uh, we also wanted to make uh, adding metadata easy. So uh, if you want to add persons, uh, for example, to a publication, uh, you usually add the name and the ORCID. And uh, we wanted to have it similar for our great Java. So we have um, the possibilities uh, to write one-liners um, to create uh, entities for persons or organizations from ORCID or RAW currently. Um, and more of that could be added in the future. So in the end, it could like look like this. Um, this is uh, how it looks like to create a simple crate with one file and one uh, person. So um, can you see my mouse? And okay. Um, so um, you can use your orchid to create your person entity. Then you create a crate uh, using the builder. Um, you can add a data entity, add a contextual entity, and the build command will then uh, return a object of type arrow crate. And you can see that the person is being added to the crate itself, but also as the author of this uh, file. Uh, Nicola uh, did some comparison of the libraries, so this might be a bit outdated. Um, I'm not sure if uh, there's been changed too much. Um, the first three, three points are creating, saving, loading, um, generating preview files. Um, this is, uh, of course, the basic functionality that is uh, common to all libraries. Uh, Nicola noticed um, that when he removed um, entities uh, using the existing libraries, that there were references to these entities still that haven't been removed. Um, he used the observer pattern uh, to solve this for our create Java. And um, yeah, so this works pretty well. And what he also did is that um, we do some, some steps, validation steps in between. Um, for example, using JSON schema, um, but also, you know, um, if there's in the standard something uh, marked as should or may, um, we try to, to encourage um, um, proper usage um, by putting a, a warning on the command line or maybe even an error if it's something bad. Um, this could be improved because it's currently not um, 
it's it's on the com it's uh, printed to the standard error output um, and it can't be retrieved by the program itself except you catch this the byte stream um, we are not sure if we need this in the future um, and how we would solve it <laughs> exactly because we don't want to abort this operations um, but uh, yeah this is this is the current state and uh, for what we need uh, it's currently working fine and we don't have a command line interface or something like that currently so our great python is to my knowledge still the only implementation that can do this nicola also did some benchmarks to um, see how this uh, architecture works out in the end um, we are pretty satisfied with the results. Uh, this benchmarks is not uh, the one that uh, Nicola did. I did those uh, just uh, two hours ago or so, so it takes a while. <laughs> um, yes, so uh, those are the results and we see that uh, the um, uh, time that our crate Java needs to create a single crate um, with n data entities and n contextual entities um, here is uh, it seems constant, but we know it raises uh, over time. Um, he also evaluated um, the Python and Ruby implementations with different options. So the Python implementation he used either the standard interpreter or the optimized PyPy interpreter, and um, he also used the Ruby um, interpreter and the same Ruby interpreter with the just-in-time compile option. Um, just to see if there are any differences that are not due to the implementation. And unfortunately, it's um, not so easy to see here uh, the, the differences because this is now on my machine and the times for Python uh, are, now, are now with the new version also really, really low. Um, um, yeah, so I, I would have to evaluate details. I can't. <laughs> tell you too much about the new version. I know that uh, in uh, 0.6, uh, there was a huge difference between the Python 3 and the PyPy version. That uh, I found uh, really interesting. Um, yeah, there was a bug. I sent you an email earlier today. I don't know if you had the chance to, to read it. Uh, I, I, I read it, but I didn't see the, the reason what exactly the issue was. So um... Yeah, I, I've added a link to a comment on GitHub. But basically, uh, there was, uh, we, we have in, in our create pi, we have um, uh, a, the, the entity class as a special uh, override of the get item method to convert uh, uh, what, what the class stores is the underlying JSON LT. So uh, just lists of dictionaries, uh, J serialized JSON data structures. And uh, this is converted on the fly to entities, to entity objects uh, when you do a get item. So there was a bug in uh, uh, specifically, so the difference in the bachelor thesis, the difference, uh, it was uh, okay for adding contextual entities uh the python performance was okay uh like you're showing now in this slide but for um for data entities it was behaving quadratically and it, it rapidly became uh the the uh, the time required became huge because uh there was a bug i was doing uh, uh, a plus equal on the has part uh, property of the root data entity. When when you add a data entity to an arrow crate, you have to update the 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 has part property of the root data entity, and it was using this anti pattern. I I mm -hmm. should call it of uh, uh, using plus equal because that translates into uh, uh, a call to the get item method, which uh, if if the uh, the property value is a list, it goes through all the elements in the list. So it, it, you would expect uh, the method to um, to run in constant time, but it, it was actually linear. So you don't have to do that. And uh, mm -hmm. I fixed this in uh, uh, 0 0.7. So when uh, Nicola was doing the work, it, the the R create library still had this bug. Mm -hmm. And so there is this striking difference 
in performance between adding contextual entities and adding data entities. But now it's okay. Just I checked it earlier this afternoon. In 0 0.7, it's okay. Yeah. So I mean, uh, it's it's possible to see the the difference. Um, so um, where did I stop? So uh, yeah. So sorry. we can see that that our well, well, you've already been interrupted. Sorry. Uh, I was just wondering about the <laughs> um the JavaScript library. Did did uh, he didn't test it, and I just reused his test implementation. So I don't know. Okay, so I'm just wondering why. Um, I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, okay. I'm not sure if there was a, a special reason uh, for that. Um, okay, so if it, if it was because there was a problem, I'd like to know. We'd like to know. That's all. No, like, not getting it to run or anything. Not as far as I'm. Okay. Okay. Um, yes. So we have this 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 constant time. Uh, kind of probably due to some validation steps we do and maybe also the uh, Java runtime that has to start. So we're not sure if we can get below that, but uh, we didn't do the benchmarks to do the most performant thing. So um, we just wanted to see if it's somehow uh, comparable and uh, we, are, we are pretty satisfied with, with the result. So um, yes, that, yeah. I, I'm not sure in how many use cases that maybe will be interesting in, in Carol's talk and on the HMC conference, uh, if there are use cases with for, for very large N or something similar to that. I'm I'm not sure to be honest. Um, yeah, we, we will see how this uh, develops over time. So this is already my last slide. <laughs> so currently we have our great Java in version 105. Um, so where there were some small uh, bug fixes and, and dependency updates. Um, we also uh, solved an issue that made it hard to use it via Gradle or something like that. So if you tried it before, um, uh, that might have been an issue and it should be solved now. You can simply use it. We also have a student uh, that uh, has a project that uses our great Java uh, using the standard ecosystem methods. Um, yeah, so our focus is still uh, on, on valid crates and ease of use. Uh, we know that there are some gaps, possibilities to create invalid uh, crates. We want to fix that uh, over time. And further work on it is ongoing. So of course, also on, on my side, but also um, there's someone uh, interested in, in Helen Holtz um, who wants to do a, a publication, a data publication. Um, with from a part of data that is stored in a database. And he also used uh, uses quite some uh, extensive uh, linked data. Um, so he's interested in using our crate. He found that uh, to be very helpful that it uses this, this approach because he can probably map his information easily. Um, yes, and uh, for our own software, so uh, DMM also has some, some uh, repository software, um, different repository softwares for special use cases. Um, and we are uh, thinking about how our crate uh, can fit in there, but our main goal is uh, to offer it to the HMC platform. And uh, we also have a student working on, on further ideas, uh, what could be uh, helpful in here. I don't want to talk about too much because this isn't uh, official yet and not fixed yet, um, but uh, probably, or hopefully in some months, maybe I can present something else here. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's already it. Thank you, Andreas. That's very interesting. Any other people who have questions for Andreas? Taylor, or oh, you're applauding. Thank you. It was clap, clap. Yes. Clap, clap. <laughs> uh, I had a question, Andreas, because it's it's nice to see this good use of the the builder pattern, the way that is very commonly used in Java. But I wondered how much support is there for I think it mentioned on the GitHub repo that we can do modifications of our crate as well. You touched upon this about supporting 
you know, when you delete entities and things like that. How are inspection of our crates, how do they work with our crate Java library? Do you mainly deal with the JSON objects or you get, can you load up other our crates and look at them with the library programmatically? You mean if, you, if I can load uh, crates in general? Yes, uh, exactly. So uh, he also did some tests. Um, the new student uh, found some more sources of our arrow crates and uh, found that some of them were not loadable. We fixed that for now. Um, I'm not sure what the current state uh, is. Um, uh, how much? How much? How many of the, these crates can be loaded? Um, but he's doing some some statistics and evaluations on that. Um, and maybe I can tell you more about that in the future. Um, but uh, so far, most crates uh, seem to be uh, compatible and can be loaded with it. Um, there were some issues because, uh, for example, Nicola did not uh, always, no, he never encoded the uh, file paths or URLs. Um, so this is an issue that is still half open. Um, and yeah, smaller things like that cost some 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 problems, but overall it, it works quite well. I'm not sure if that answers the full question because I'm not sure. Pasha, I yeah, I also wondered how if you could like load up and get like get auto and get a person object, or how do you just get a generic entity? Ah, because you were talking about okay. these Java classes or versus JSON kind of objects. Yeah. Um, so it should also be uh, possible to get these uh, back simply by, so it, I mentioned this raw JSON loading, this is some kind of, let's call it pre-processing, but in the end it should, should all end in okay. proper classes, so oh, that's nice. the getter methods, um, uh, in some cases, I'm not sure if that's there's methods for everything. So maybe it will be get properties and then get author or something like that. Um, I would have to investigate that further. Uh, currently we quite focus on the creation, but uh, reading is, is also something we want to support and we do support. It's just not too much experience with that yet. So of course more possible variation in there yeah christopher you had the question yeah uh first of all um it's the first time i'm here um my first um show up show up at your your community thanks a lot for organizing this um i've stumbled um, a couple of months ago on the hour crate project and i thought it was really interesting i've also read a lot read a lot of the the initial papers on that and uh, for me it's very relevant because me and my team were building uh, user scientist centric and researcher centric repositories and so for us um, one of the main goal is user experience and we want to essentially ease the user experience so that we can uh, onboard scientists with these type of research object solutions right our crate being one of them and probably you know one of the most promising out of them mm -hmm. so i had a few questions for you andreas first one um has this are, are you running this currently in your uh in the center for computing is this uh, live in production or is this still uh, um, some work in progress and the second question is what's your approach to persistent identifiers okay so um the current state is that uh, so nicola finished his thesis just uh, i think two months ago um so it's it's a very early project um it's available on github and we know people experimenting with it, but it's currently um, not running on any or integrated in any kind of server software and run in production in that sense. Um, so I've been talking about this uh, uh, energy informatics uh, use case. So uh, there it is a data collection from a photovoltaic system. Um, and he, he has some quite extensive model metadata description uh, ontology stuff on that and he would like to publish that and that's uh, i would say uh, the most sophisticated uh, 
uh, use case that we currently know of. So it's it's in early stages, and we hope that it will adapt it, be adapted by different hubs in agency uh, quite well. But uh, it's it's just starting, to be honest. <laughs> Um, cool. So we'll we'll be looking uh, we'll be looking at your uh, GitHub uh, repo and uh, <laughs> digging into it. Yeah, I, I hope so. So um, I also uh, spoiler that we have a second student now uh, working on this, and um, he's he's using it for some it for some well let's call it prototype for now. Um, we'll see how how it will develop over time and how his thesis will do um and we hope that there will be some let's say more accessible tools so a java library of course has some limitations i also mentioned that we don't have a command line interface and uh, people who don't want to use a command line interface probably even don't program java um, so we know that there's some barrier there and we try to to break this uh, already with our other services because currently we we really focus on um, so the KT data manager term, it's, it's an evolved term, but currently most of it uh, that is underneath that is or was um, without user interface. It, we have background services and then we build specialized um, user interfaces and we are now trying to focus more on, on um, more generic ones and similar to that it would be of course useful to have something for uh, our great Java. Something. And the general approach, the general yeah. goal is more in, in the context of a migration of existing resources, or is it for um, essentially as a, as, a, as a platform for uh, new ongoing research? Mm, so uh, we do not plan to build some kind of repository for crates, especially uh, if that was the question in that direction. I, I saw that there is already some, some approaches to that. Um, I think it's a much more generic approach. So we didn't have in mind that it's it's more for legacy data or more for new data. I hope that it's useful for, for both yeah. kind of cases. Um, yeah. I'm not Carol, sure. you have a question. And I also wanted to ping again, Andreas, on that versus an identifier question. So I don't know which one yeah. you want to do first. Carol? Sorry. Um, I was just going to say that the Helmholtz Metadata Collaboration has an entire work package called the FAIR Data Commons, which is a uh, building or the persistent identifier um, uh, systems, data types, and so on. And it includes RO Crate in that piece. So I just put the link to that piece there. I don't know, Andreas, I know Helmholtz is a complicated thing. Um, is it the um, the data commons that you're involved in, or are you on a periphery? Uh, no, it's the uh, Fair Data Commons that I'm involved right. in. Right. Okay. So, so there's there's quite a lot of information about the different identifier schemes and things like that, Christopher. Um, that that could be available to you just to help. I'm just trying to help you out, Andreas. Uh, yeah, sorry, I, I forgot the question about the identifiers. I wasn't yeah. sure about uh, what the question meant exactly. I think the question uh, was... It's like, you know, like put, putting some context into this. Um, uh, it's a little bit of a bottleneck, you know, when let's say a researcher wants to upload, you know, multiple different data sets, multiple code files, multiple components of this research, and we need to go to doi.org and mint, you know, 50 DOIs, right, in, in, in this particular case. Like, so we're having like bottlenecks with, with, with you know, our ability to assign and create PIDs in a, in a seamless way uh, so that we provide a good user experience. So I'm kind of curious what you, if, if you've been uh, um, experimenting with alternatives um, I, um, to, to these systems. Okay, um, so our focus uh, um, with, with PIDs is the same as our focus on, on fair digital objects. So there's this um, uh, idea of uh, something called uh, PIT services, um, which um, we have an implementation of called the type PID maker. This is um, something that hopefully is uh, soon in. So it's already being used, but it's not something I would call a 1.0 yet, but I can also put the link in the chat. And the idea here is that we have um, currently, we support handle PIDs, which includes DOIs, but 
uh, so DOIs are part of this handle ecosystem. And um, the idea is here uh, to have um, extensively described PID records. Um, so we have a, we use um, existing data type registry and the this service then checks if, if every value uh, is a type in this registry and if the value for that is correct. Um, so now I have no idea where I did put the chat. So if you want, you can look at that, but I know that this um, evolved from, from some software. So it needs quite some cleanup still, but it works and people create PIDs with that in our group. Great, um, thanks a lot. So this is a, maybe I should start from scratch. So this is a, a REST service that offers you the possibility to send some, some record information and you will get a PID back basically. But it has some, uh, yeah, it, it. And is it based on the handle system or is it content addressed? Can you repeat the question? It's, it's based on the handle system. Uh, so in theory, you could, so currently we have implementation for the handle system and some, let's call it a sandbox, which creates not real PIDs, but for testing, this is the default, default configuration. Um, so <coughs> I'm not sure what means building on the handle system. Um, kind of, yes, but we could also switch to another one. So there's an interface and we can do implementations for that. And um, but we focus on the handle system because it very well suits this, this fairly O idea of having uh, keys and values. And um, yeah, it's, it's widespread. I mean, DOI is based on it. And, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome.